like we're about ready to go. Our official Jaime Martel will be going over court hinders. There are none unless there is an odd bounce, which players can appeal for. A referee can call anyway. But there's no designated court hinders. He's pointing out that the line, the 12-foot line above the glass is out. Doing a toy cost to determine who serves first. The USA got here by beating Costa Rica last night in two straight games. U.S. team leader Cheryl Kirk is lining up a photo. You can see a lot of our photos that we've been taking all week on Facebook. Speaking of Facebook, we encourage you to go on there and please share the live feed address on your own feed. We're trying to share racquetball with the world and we need your help to do it. So if you have an opportunity to share the photos and share the link to the live feed, we'd much appreciate it. So here we go. Gary Mazaroff back in his chair, 18th IRF World Championships, men's double semifinal, Kali, Colombia. It's great to be back with you, Tim, here at Club Cañas Gordas. There's an example of the power that we were talking about before we went on air, Gary. Jake really hits it hard. Once again, see if he can control the unforced errors. Good shot down the line from Keller. Keller's known as a singles player primarily. He was a semifinalist in the singles in 2014. But this year he opted to play doubles with his partner Carrasco. Two quick points for the U.S. Remaining Bolivian contingent, Moscoso, you saw earlier. Lose to Rocky Carson in a very tight tie break. And Roland Keller, Carlos Keller's brother, lost earlier in the week. Huge forehand pinch from Jake. His partner is Jose Diaz from California. These pair won the national doubles. They also finished second at the U.S. Open last year. Contrast for the Bolivian team, Keller and Carrasco. Keller lives down in the jungle in Santa Cruz. Carrasco lives at 12,000 feet above sea level in La Paz. And some people may not be too familiar with these two Bolivians, but we know them well from their participation in the World Championships, Junior World Championships, with there from Keller. They don't play on the professional tour very much but we know they can play, Gary. Absolutely. A lot of skills. Here's Back a great when example. When I saw Carlos play at 12, I thought this guy could be world champ. Nobody stopped play, they kept going. US, the USA is still serving 3-2. Avoidable hinder called, point for the US. They're up 4-2. This game started quickly. Tim, we got two and a half hours behind after the uh, Moscoso Carson singles match and made up quite a bit of the time after the ladies' doubles. Marlis Keller rips one to the left side corner, rolls it out, two serving four. They're not going to be intimidated in this environment. Last night, they took on a very tough Canadian team, went down first game, came back, won it second game, and tie break. They could certainly shoot it. Carrasco there on the right side with a reverse pinch. Fist pump from him. Three serving four.
Big skip from Jake. Grimace in the backcourt. Touches rackets with his partner Diaz. Carrasco sticking with that half lob down the wall. It's gonna make the front wall. Oh, wow. Little apology there from Keller. He did well to get it. Bounced awkwardly, Jake wasn't able to make it. So Bolivia has a lead, 5-4. Rally any pinch, left side, Bredenbeck. Keller covered the line. Carrasco moved up, just didn't quite move up far enough. Eretz skipped by Carlos. So Gary, both these, te both these two teams can really hit the ball hard. What's gonna be the difference? that's going to result in a win for one of them. I think Bredenbeck realizing that he doesn't have to hit everything hard and being precise when he does. Wonderful retrieval by Diaz. This is coming off the back wall, though, for Keller. Goes cross court. Diaz picks it up. Keller, another chance. Now it's Diaz's turn. Uh, Carrasco. Skip. Hits it into the floor. We saw this a little bit last night, Gary. Bolivia made a lot of unforced errors in game one. Seemed to have started that way too, but they're still in it at 5-5. Five five. Safety hold up. So Bredenbeck elected to go down Carrasco's side, and he hit it so hard that Diaz couldn't move out. Power there from Keller. It's so hard, Gary, to control power by hitting power in return. Oh. A lot of training. Carlos has such great hands. He can handle power. Good shot there from Braden Beck. Speaking of good hands and Carlos Keller, if you go on our YouTube channel, he played Alvaro Beltran, a couple years ago. Good pick up from Diaz. Has to be an avoidable hinder. Diaz shaking his head. Bloqueo, he blocked him. Pan Am Championships, quarterfinals. Probably the best point of a, a finishing match I've ever seen. Beltran hits it to the back, Keller falls over, practically dives into the back corner, flicks it around his shoulder, pinch winner to beat Alvaro Beltran. You can catch that on our YouTube channel. Meanwhile, US are back in the front court, down by one. Still casing each other out, see what works. Diaz lines up for a drive serve of some kind. Broken ball. And thanks to the International Racquetball Federation, Osvaldo Maggi, Luke Sainange, local organizing committee, Juan Manuel Gutierrez, and our great sponsors, official ball of the International Racquetball Federation, ProPen and the official racket company of the IRF, E-Force. Do you want to win or? What? Meanwhile, there's a big skip from Keller. He whacks his calf with his racket in frustration. He knows he should have done better. He was way up front. Maybe tried to hit it too hard. Good pickup from Diaz. How about that in response? Made up for it with a reverse winner, Tim. This is tight, first game, six serving six. Some mistakes from the Bolivians. Bolivians are the silver medalists in the Pan Am Games in doubles. 
But this isn't the pair we saw. The two singles players here, Roland Keller and Conrado Moscoso, were the pair that won silver there. So this is a new pairing for Bolivia. Good hands from Jake, pinch winner. We should be fortunate to watch after this match. Defending world champ doubles team, Franco and Herrera. Colombia playing the iconic team of Moreno and Beltran from Mexico. Great reverse temp. That's really tough to take high like took, that. Took it off an intermediate bounce. Ball's elevating. Snaps it into the left corner. Wide angle textbook. Well, we appreciate the doubles pair of Colombia and Mexico waiting for the outcome of this match to play there so that we can stream it for you. They had the option of playing now because of the delays we've had today with, well, not delays really, but just long matches. So we appreciate them being willing to wait so that we can all enjoy the match. Call on the floor by Martel is a skip. And at first, uh, Carrasco's appealing Diaz shot, says it jumped into the floor. Call stands, one last person agreed, one disagreed, much to the disgusto of Carrasco. Calma, calma. Little conversation between Diaz and Carrasco on the right. Backhands, you love. Great serve, Tim. They're just they're waiting up they're waiting there for a left up shot. I mean he's hitting the ball, trying to splat it from thirty nine feet. That's a much better shot. Dead ball hand to replay. Bredenbeck did twice during that rally was he ran around his backhand to take a forehand, pinning himself closer to the left side wall. Looks like the U.S. are going to take a timeout to regroup. We're going to take one ourselves. We will be back very shortly for the continuation of game one. Welcome back, everybody. Timeouts are one minute. Gary, the score is pretty tight. Why would the U.S. take a timeout there? Gather the thoughts, maybe come up with a different serve. Calm him down a tad. Uh, maybe discuss what Jake did the last time. Maybe better serve to take a backhand from the middle rather than running around. The nuances of coaching. And yeah, they're entitled to three, so why not use them? Keller runs around to the forehand. He has off the wall. Bradenbeck finishes it with a forehand pinch. That was a bit wild, that rally. Wild rally and a wise timeout. They win the side out. Diaz goes down the wall. Fist pump from Keller. That was a beautiful shot. Maybe Bradenbeck went for a little too much there. Broken ball, what's gonna happen? These players hit it very, very hard. And the we talked about this earlier, Tim, the environmental changes here. Rains come in, now it's clear, very, very humid, very hot, and it cools down later. Damn serve, good response from Carrasco, sets up for Keller. Oh, Diaz. Yeah, he left up that reverse and Diaz read it. So Bolivia has a lead in game one, 8-7, trying to close this out. The winner will face either Colombia or Mexico. Beautiful hands there from Keller. 
congratulations to, excuse me, Tim, congratulations to Team USA, ladies. They will play in the final tomorrow. As will Rocky Carson. He'll be facing Daniel De La Rosa of Mexico. Paola Langoria will be facing Gabby Martinez, which to some may be a surprise, but not necessarily to us who have seen her at the World Championship since 2012 as a 12-year-old. She has three years left to play juniors. So Carrasco down the line, winner, 11 serving seven. What a great get from Keller. Another one that has to That'll be unavoidable. Be yeah. He was fortunate, I mean, he was able to get out of the way the first time, it's which was a surprise. Great athleticism there from Keller. Nice to see Jake help him back up. That's great sportsmanship. Skipped in from Carrasco. He knows great he should have done better. Sidewall, front wall combo from Jake. Incredible power just from the wrist. Speaking of power, Gary, you, you know, on when we stream this, sometimes it doesn't look as fast as it is in real life. And then you actually get on the court with these guys, and it's just astonishing how hard they hit it. Those of us who've been fortunate to play in the World Championships, we get to play the professionals, and at times it's thrilling, but it's also frightening because they do hit it so hard. Wide angle, cracked by Redbeck. He gave us a, twi a different twist on that serve. He drove it dra right up the middle. Let's see what he does see. this time. Excellent pickup. Power. That's a lot right of pace, Tim. A lot of pace. So if he can control it, that's great. He's been hitting a lot of good drive serves. We've seen him play in the Pan American Championships twice in the final, coming out the loser. First, it's a side out. First time was to Jose Diaz. Second time was to De La Rosa. We have both of those matches on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube.com, look for International Racquetball Federation. Keller, winner left side. 12-9, Team Bolivia. He's been consistently going, picking up that cross court from Diaz and going straight down the line. Great serve. Diaz wins no the call. Point. No call Didn't because matter. he won the point. Yeah. 12 serving nine. Jake's going to set up on this. Finishes it perfectly. Critical inning right here for Team USA. Z serve. Keller. Left up pinch, left up pinch, floor. And you heard what Jake thought about that. Now it's Keller's turn to put it into the floor. The gift for the Americans. Back in the middle again, Tim. Second skip in a row from Keller. That was tough to control, though. That was a very hard, fast rally. Consequently, U.S. are serving 11-12. The Bolivians take a timeout to regroup. We'll do the same. We're at the 18th IRF World Championships here in Colombia. Before this, it was Burlington. Canada, Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, Seoul, Korea, King's Court, Ireland. I'll stop there, Gary, but talk a little bit about the Dominican play. We only, have, we only have 
20 countries here, which is not the most we've ever had. But the level of play is, in my opinion, the highest it's ever been. Well, we've lost quite a few countries, especially from Europe, in, in, as, as far as our participation goes. Most of the teams here have full teams, at least with the men and, and many with the women. We used to have another 10 to 15 delegations coming maybe with one player. Uh, that being said, the quality overall in the game, technology, et cetera, and how things evolve is the level of play is greater, higher. And that's a function of the quality of play in this event at all levels, Tim. So we saw Bolivia take a timeout. They came back in and two big skips. U.S. find themselves up 13-12. Fault serve twice, though. twice in the last couple innings. It's just what Bolivia needed after skipping the ball twice. 12-13, game one, 18th IRF World Racquetball Championships. Skip ball from Diaz. So we saw Bolivia skip twice, U.S. forged ahead, and we see a long serve and a skip by U.S. Good wide angle pass there from Braden Beck in the back. Still two points away from game one or Bolivia, they're serving. Watching Carlos Keller from Santa Cruz de la Sierra and Bolivia serving. Braden Beck, USA responding. Wow, great get from Keller. He's got his opportunity now. Wonderful wide angle. wide angle pass. Took the right shot, Gary. Most would have gone for a pinch there. Yeah, if you leave it up, you're leaving it up deep. Make your, uh, we talked about this before U.S. and uh, Canada played, the ladies. If your opponent's going to score, make them score from deep court. Here's Bolivia's chance to finish game one. And Keller again, dips it. pitch. Both players on the U.S. are up there covering. When you saw uh, Keller. Hi hindsight, probably a wide angle would have been a more appropriate shot. He took that, took that shot quite high. 13-14. Flat. Americans turn for a game point. Win by one, 14-14. Can't get closer than this. First game point for Team USA. After staving off Bolivia's first game point. Excellent return by Carrasco. If they were playing in his hometown, that ball would still be traveling. Gary talks about the altitude that he lives at. Jake, meanwhile, lines up for a drive serve. This is Diaz's chance, or Jake takes it. Keller misses Punishing, it. punishing cross court. 15-14, game one. So with that, we'll take a timeout and we'll talk to IRF Hall of Fame director of tournaments, coach, legend in his own right, when we return to figure out what tweaks Bolivia need to do to be on the other side of a 15-14 game. Welcome back, everybody. Game two of this men's double semifinal between Bolivia and U.S. Both teams are already assured a medal. Now they want to find out what color it's going to be. Jake left that one up. Gary got punished by Carrasco in the left corner. No big changes as far as tweaks, Tim. Just execute better. They, had, they were on the cusp. They had game point. Good hands from Diaz. Keller, though, another good get from Diaz. Down Keller, the line. Keller skipped in game point from up front. I mean, what are you going to do? He'd like that opportunity again. We have a replay. Same serve from Carrasco. Diaz to the ceiling. Caught on Diaz's shoes.
Wow. Cut that off. Nobody was ready for that. Great shot there from Carlos Keller on the left. He was ready. Was indeed. Two quick points there for Bolivia. Finally, Jake puts one down. Great defense from Keller. Jake, Jake just kept powering at him. Eventually, Keller with the mistake. Excuse me, Jake with the winner. I'm surprised the Bolivians didn't appeal in the middle of that rally. It looked like Jake and Keller made contact with each other. Incidental contact. They still had their opportunities. Good rally, nonetheless. U.S. zero serving two. High lob. Carrasco into the floor. A little different twist on his serve now. It's an excellent serve down that glass. So hard to see. Wide, Wide angle winner. Smart play from Diaz. Good serve. Poor return. Finished it to the left side. point for the U.S. I want to remind everybody while we have a chance about the World Senior Racquetball Championships coming up in Albuquerque, New Mexico. My co-commentator, Gary Mazaroff, tournament director. Gary, how many years have you held it there? This is year 32, my friend. First year, 1985. Encourage all of you over the age of 35 to come and join us. We have ages up to 90 playing. And it's amazing to see such athleticism for those who continue to play racquetball throughout their life. Ages start at 35, go up by five, play a lot of matches, have a lot of fun, very competitive, and I encourage you to come. I'm a little biased, scary, but I would say, in my opinion, the best tournament I ever go to. That's why we hire you to promote it, Tim. <laughs> Singles, doubles, mixed doubles. Play one, play three. USA, head 4-2, hold up by Keller. Carrasco consistently hitting that serve. Moving back, snapping through, rolling out. It's a lot of wrist strength to do that, Gary. As I said, when I saw him playing at 12, I said, this guy has the tools to be world champ. Martel, our head official, calling a replay. Yeah, Carrasco held up. He, he had a good opportunity to take a swing there, and he didn't. He said safety. That's fair enough. Hand out. U.S. can appeal. They have five appeals available. They haven't used one. Again, Keller hitting nicely down the line. He and Jake Bradenbeck, Minnesota, are having a good tussle down that left side. Wow. Don't, that, don't try that at home, Gary. No. Wonderful shot there from Carlos Keller. Took it chest high, reverse pinch roll out. Keller will get another chance. This time it's Carrasco who goes to the left with a reverse pitch. Two quick points now, six serving four. 
Braden Beck has a quick word with his partner, Diaz. And then Keller skips it. So this game has staggered. 2-0, 2-4, 6-4. Another skip from Keller. Down the line goes Diaz. It's a good serve. An ace serve. US have evened it up. Let's see if they can pull ahead. Carrasco's gonna attack this. Keller with the opportunity, goes cross court. Good pickup from Jake. Carrasco calls off Keller. Quick Good hand. rally. <laughs> Keller behind the back. <laughs> Carrasco to the ceiling. Jake hits it and takes it. What a great rally from both teams. Front wall, side wall exploded at his feet. You give Jake time to swing, boy, watch out. Really powered that shot, no response. As a result, USA take the lead in this game too. Seven serving six. Through the legs from Braden Beck. Keller, both teams. Oh my goodness, how did that happen? Both US players ran into each other. Both Bolivian players pretty much ran into each other. Ball dies on the front. Corner. See how far that ball jumped off the vidrio? That ball came almost back to the service zone. Keller and still of course, had. And of course, Jake had to clear out. Keller had to still finish it, but he did it nicely. Back in the box, six serving seven. Good pass down the line from Keller. He's getting a lot of joy, Gary. Just hitting it straight. Skips sometimes when he pinches, less so when he goes down the line. The time he went cross court right into the power zone. That was nice hands Diaz. from Diaz. Just responded by guiding it down the line. Carrasco wasn't home. It's tied up, seven each. Good pick up from Diaz. There it is down the line. Jake, great defense. It's a good rally. Who's gonna win it? Keller, no. Jake. Pinch, Diaz gets there. Oh, he wins it. Carlos was late. Carlos was late. Maybe a little fatigue, what a great rally. Plus Both you, of these teams are walking around. They're tired from that one. Plus you got the behemoth on the left side. It's tough to get around him. Not surprisingly then, looks like we have a timeout. We're gonna take a quick commercial break and we'll rejoin with the score tied. USA serving 7-7. Welcome back everybody, Tim Baghurst joined by Gary Mazaroff. The score is tied at 7-7 in game two. USA took the first game 15-14. Very tight game, Gary, lots of great rallies. This is why we're here. A lot of action, this is quality doubles, folks. Quality doubles, quick hands, a lot of different types of shots, offensive and defensive, different angles and heights and speeds on the serves. And really, no advantage to either team. U.S. was able to close out game one, win 15-14. Here we are with a tie at seven. So, Gary, Bolivia take a timeout. As a result, get a half out. Bolivia are often in the medal hunt, along with the U.S., Mexico. Canada, although Colombia are the defending men's doubles champions. We'll see them in action next against the veterans, Alvaro Beltran, Javier Moreno. 
stick with us for that. I suspect that's going to be a very exciting match also. Absolutely. Mexico wants uh, La Revancha, the revenge. They lost handily to Colombia in Canada, but it wasn't with this team. Uh, Alvaro played doubles with another player, and uh, the quality of that team certainly is not what it is now. That being said, here we are, Colombia trying to win again on their home turf. That's two skips there from, one from Diaz, one from Jake. Bolivia up 9-7. Excellent serve there. Diaz does well to get it into the backcourt. Good pickup from Braden Beck. Another great pickup. Down the line goes Keller. Kill shot, three quick points. Speaking of Mexico being next, they're in the hunt for the world championship title, something they've never won before. So we will see after tomorrow whether they can claim that title for the first time in their history. Keller, meanwhile, has a chance here. Good cover from Carrasco. Forehand pinch. Gary, that's a great example of teamwork. Yeah. Good communication skills. Last couple of points, you saw Team USC be, Team USA be the retrievers, Tim, which has changed from previously. Bolivians forcing the issue. Some good serving on this right side. To the ceiling goes Diaz. Carrasco returns. It's going to come up for Diaz for an attacking shot. Keller tried to push it into the front left corner. Wasn't able to do so. Still, they're still in the box, 11 serving seven. Looks like a revert, uh, excuse me, Z-serve. He's been doing that consistently. There's an appeal. The hinder call was dead ball hinder before Diaz swung, which nullifies any activity afterwards. Call stands. U.S. has lost one of their appeals they have. Four left. Both line judges agree with Jaime Martel from Mexico. Professional player himself. It's great to have that level of player refereeing, Gary, because they understand the nuances of being in that environment and the uh, anxiety and pressure how hard they hit it certainly helps. Oh, it's great to have Jaime there. And he has the other tools as well. He's bilingual. He can communicate. He's got a great personality. He understands the nuances, as you said. So a few minutes ago, Bolivia took a timeout at 7-7. They came back in, won six points in a row. Looks like a replay there. Flat winner. Looked like you out there, Tim. I don't think so, Gary, but I appreciate the confidence in my abilities. Representing England here this year, I've really enjoyed it. It's been great to represent your country and carry your flag in an opening ceremonies. One of several countries with just a few delegates or players here mm -hmm. from around the world makes it a little more difficult when you don't have coaches in your corner, as do the USA and Bolivia, who are speaking with their coaches right now. And so, as a consequence, it makes it a little more difficult because you have to figure out what you're doing wrong on the court, as opposed to having somebody giving you an outside expert opinion. Given your expert opinion, Gary, the US have just lost seven points in a row before they took a timeout. Well, you and I both know that the percentages are with them to get out here, get win this rally, and guess what? They did. So the fact that they called a timeout was huge. Now, what are they going to do to get back in the game? Concentrate every point. See if Diaz hits that high lob down the wall again. Deep breath from him. He does. It's a Good great serve. serve. So now we have the setup.
That being said, they have the opportunity. That's all you can do. Jake hit it hard. It was low, but you saw Keller really bend his knees to stay down and finish that rally. Good hands from him, good technique. Jam serve from Jake. Carrasco let it run around to the right side, took the forehand pinch. Jake wasn't home. Here we go. Bolivia, Bolivia has taken over the momentum. And going into a tie break, if it happens, they should have that momentum based on the scoring. They'll have the serve. Still 14-7, game point. Kicks out. So they had two opportunities there that inning and skipped both of them. Never, Yet at the same never time, say never. you saw some good communication between the Bolivians where they switched sides in that rally. Still, they weren't able to put it away. Diaz switches it up. Drive serve. Not sure all players were ready there, so we have a second serve, essentially. Or did it hit somebody? Dead ball hinder, the ball hit Diaz on its route to the front wall. Left up pinch. Backhand rollout by Jake. Now Team USA has eight points. Another good serve. Diaz is going to shoot this. It's high, though. Oh, Diaz skipped it. Keller went back to him. Diaz had the opportunity, Gary, just wasn't able to finish it. So now it's Jake's turn. He's been drive serving consistently. It looks like he's going to continue doing so. Very few fault serves. Good pickup from Carrasco. Great hands from Keller. Well, Gary Keller won the Behind the back shot on that occasion. Jake not able to finish in the same manner. Here we go. We have match, uh, game point again, 14-8. Diaz to the ceiling. Skip by Jose Diaz. So we have a tie break, Gary. Bolivia. Momentum in the hands of Bolivia, Tim. They're coming in. They'll serve. U.S. hasn't uh, They scored one point in the last X number of innings. That's right. It was 7-7. And uh, we'll discuss, as we start game three, we'll discuss the subtle changes that both teams have made or not. We're going to take a break. Players have up to five minutes between game two and three. That being said, welcome back, everybody. 18th IRF World Championships. Tim Baghurst, Gary Mazaroff, Gary Bolivia. We're in a tiebreak situation this time. Yesterday, they pulled it out against Canada. Now they have an opportunity to advance to the final against the United States. That's correct, after dropping the first game in both, both matches. Just there's an individual in the window on the front there was using a flash. They're just making sure that's turned off. So here we go. Change up on the serve. Good pick up from Diaz. Keller. Again, he's really hitting that down the line well, Gary. So we said that the momentum was with Bolivia, and it remains so. And here we are, 2-0 in the tie break. Yeah, that was actually a poor serve. You saw it kicked out. Diaz really had an opportunity, didn't take it. Carrasco showed him what he should have done in that situation. Rolled it out in the far left corner. Oh. I'm not sure what the situation is there. Jake helps him up. Tripped over his own feet. We were blocked from view. Looks like Keller's okay. That's good to see. So Diaz lines up. Goes down the middle. Jake's going to power this. Doesn't put it down, but good hands to keep it alive. Keller, pinch winner. So it seems to me, Gary, that Bolivia seemed to be putting the ball away a little bit better than the Americans. It 
unlucky from Keller. That slid down the wall, hit his frame. But as a consequence, the U.S. find themselves on the board, one serving two. Mistake from Carrasco, maybe went a bit for a bit too much there. Jake went down the middle with a drive serve. Play continues. The Bolivians are going to appeal this serve. Call was a legal serve, and there's an appeal. Call stands. Both line judges agree. So now the U.S. take the lead, three serving two. Broken ball. Jake's clearly frustrated by that. He thought he had a winner. Replay three serving two. Gary Jake, somebody who's going to benefit from this two, new two serve rule. He likes the drive serve. Yes, he does. Good hands from Keller. Diaz, though. Wide angle pass. Good shot selection. Find themselves 4 2 up. So the U.S. has regained the momentum, Tim after not having scored only one point in the previous X amount of innings, they now have a 4-2 lead. Jake's come up with a nice array of serves as he pounds a winner for point five. Five serving two, so that's five straight points for the Americans. Maybe the Bolivian contingent want to consider a timeout just to regroup. They have two of them. They elect not to. And a big skip from Carrasco on the right. There we have it. We do have a timeout. Carlos Keller takes it. We'll take a timeout also, and we'll be back shortly. Welcome back, everybody. 18th IRF World Championships here in Cali, Colombia. U.S. are returning into the service box at six serves two. Bolivians went up 2-0 quickly. Americans managed to get the opportunity to serve and took six points in a row. So Gary, let's see if this timeout works. Let's see if the Bolivians can regroup, get themselves in a serving opportunity. The answer's no. So we went from 2-0 to 2-7. Excellent serve from Safety Jake. Safety hold up. They're appealing for an avoidable hinder, Tim. Call stands. I'm a little confused by that. I thought he I said he replay. I, I, I believe he awarded a point, and there was a, an appeal for an avoidable hitter, and they didn't get it. Same thing. Well, there are appeals available. Could have appealed for a dead ball hinder second time. So they didn't get the dead uh, avoidable hinder call. That's correct. So this time we have a call going against the United States. Good shot was the call from Jaime Martel. There was an appeal and it was upheld by the line judges. Jose Diaz looks to Jake. I think he's just telling him to calm down a little bit, refocus. Cute, beautiful hands there from Diaz. He was going to hit a backhand, flicked his wrist around, pushed it onto the front wall. We're still at two serving eight. Carlos Keller, you serve. Here's Keller's chance. Wonderful hands from Diaz, athleticism to get there. 
but not that time. That's unlucky. Wide angle from Carrasco. Hope you're appreciating the athleticism on display from these athletes this week. Set up for Keller, what's he gonna do? He leaves it up. What a point. I hope you appreciated that. The hand speed, the power, the teamwork. That time won by Keller. Diaz was on the left, Keller went to the right. There was no one home. Four serving eight. Two points from the Bolivians. Looks like a replay. Players got caught up in the middle. Keller goes a little higher on the Z. Pinches it, but it stays up. Diaz puts it down. Eight serving four. These two won the national doubles to earn the right to represent their country here. And now they're looking at closing out with an ace serve. That's nine serving four, two points away. They want to be in this final. They'll be facing either Colombia, the defending world champions, or Mexico, who will be playing next. I encourage you to stay with us for that. If you enjoyed this one, you're going to enjoy the next one. Both teams are incredible. Great athleticism from Jake. Oh my goodness, Keller. Diaz flew across the court there, just quite not able to get to that ball. So it's a half out, nine serving four, still two points away. Jake lines up for a drive serve. Oh, it's a nice serve. Kicks the glass between the side wall and back wall and just dies in the back. That provides match point for the USA. Timeout Bolivia, no. Keller cracks out on the side. Maybe a little fortunate there. Jake slipped, looked like that was a little sore. I hope he's okay, I think he is. It was an awkward slip from him. So, Bolivian's not out. Wide angle. Diaz couldn't quite get there. There's one. Six more. We've seen it happen this week. We saw a tiebreaker earlier. There's a skip from Diaz. Timeout USA if I'm their coach. But I'm not, they turn around, they regroup. Here they go. Skip from Keller. He had an opportunity, maybe swung a little too much. Tired, perhaps. Yeah, we saw a 10 serving two tie break loss today. Nine points in a row for one player. There's another one. Seven serving 10. The US do have time, two timeouts. Bolivians creep ever closer. Diaz goes to the ceiling. Carrasco's gonna shoot this. Oh, Jake can't get there. Forehand pinch stayed up. Jake was almost able to get it, but he wasn't. Eight serving 10. There's tension in the crowd, ladies and gentlemen. Heart rates are racing. We've got a good contingent of Bolivians and Americans in the crowd, not to mention the Colombians and Mexicans who are waiting for their match. I hope we get excitement like this next time. Good pickup from Jake. Broken ball. Broken ball. I didn't see it, but you probably heard it. Wow. This is why we love this sport. This is a high quality match. Lots of great shots. Very few skips. I hope you're enjoying this at home. We'll have this on our YouTube channel later. For you to enjoy once again. Meanwhile, 
Oh, Carrasco not able to pick it up off the back glass. So let's see if the U USA can close it out. Match point number two. There's a little conversation between the two. Diaz just wants to make sure the score was called. He lines up for a drive serve. Oh, what a shot from Jake Bradenbeck to finish. Beautiful pass down the line. Great effort from Keller to save it. Just not quite able to get there. A lot of respect for both of these teams. Hugs from the players. They played really, really well. Bolivia, no shame in this defeat. They pushed the U.S. to the very brink. Not quite able to finish it out. Congratulations to them nonetheless for making the semifinals. They should be proud of their efforts, especially after last night.